Right. So um, I think a year ago um, I spoke a little bit about what the XPROC working group's plans were for XPROC uh, 2.0. Uh, XPROC, for those of you who don't know, is a language for specifying uh, a sequence of operations to be performed on XML documents. Um, perform X include run this style sheet, validate this document, produce some output. So the, the that is a, um, sorry, make it, we'll make it pretty. That's, a, that's an XPROC pipeline that says do X include, then do some XSLT, and then validate. Um, you can sort of de define arbitrary pipelines with, um, with XPROC. And XPROC 1.0 came out as a recommendation in two years ago now, or three, I guess. And, you know, it's not the runaway success that, you know, 60 Minutes hasn't been profiling me, unfortunately. But, um, but you know, it's got some uptake, and there are some communities that are making a lot of use of it. And uh, in any 1.0 effort, uh, it's easy after you're done to look back and say, man, there's three or four things we just screwed up. I mean, when you're writing specs and you're in a committee, you eventually get to the point in the process where you need to deliver something. And so you stop fixing things and you start, you start shooting engineers and shipping. Uh, and so XPROC 2.0, the goal is entirely focused on removing some of the sharp edges and trying to make it easier to use and hoping that we get that done in a fashion that's timely enough to, uh, to have a greater adoption. So I'm going to just talk about, in, in brief, about some of the things that we've actually done so far. The XPROC working group managed to ship the, the, first, the, first, uh, the first working draft in December of 2014. Yay. Uh, I think that's only five months late. So, you know, we're doing well as a working group. Uh, so there are two specs there, XPROC 2.0 and XPROC 2.0 steps. And uh, we've moved the development of the specification to, uh, to, to GitHub. So you can fork the specs and change them and send pull requests if you'd like. Uh, or you can just read them there. You've, certainly that's where I prefer that issues get filed. Uh, and there's a Travis build system. So whenever the editors um, make a change proposal, we get automatic diffs and things, which is really very cool. Travis is, Travis is a joy. Um, the very first thing that we did, or the, perhaps the worst thing we did in XPROC 1.0 has to do with parameters, which are just a god-awful mess. Um, and they exist to support the XSLT use, to use case on per, per, particularly the docbook style sheets, which have you know, 400 parameters. And, and having to declare those 400 parameters in your pipeline in order, in order to be able to pass them through to the style sheet was just deemed too ridiculous. And so we invented this mechanism which uses an input port and all sorts of magic um, to do parameters. In uh, XPROC 2.0, we're going to adopt maps from uh, XSLT 2 or XSLT 3, uh, and we're going to make parameters a bog standard option, which is a map, which maps from QNames to item star. So um, you'll be able to pass in parameters that way and construct them with XPath expressions. And we may end up with some new steps along the way uh, to do, to do uh, map construction. Uh, the next thing, the, the next problem we really wanted to solve was the problem of an XSLT style sheet which says, it had, which has an output method that says it's supposed to be serialized as text or serialized as HTML or something. But of course, in a pipeline context, there's no serialization that's taking place when that XSLT step ends. And so um, that information gets lost. And however the pipeline chooses to serialize that uh, document is how it actually gets serialized. Um, so we, that was a problem we wanted to solve. We also had the problem of base URIs that are associated with documents. Um, there are a couple of edge cases where the base URIs are sort of tricky to maintain. And so what we've decided to do is, uh, is associate with documents flowing through the pipeline a, a separate set of metadata, key value pairs, uh, where we will store the, the document base URI and the content type. And I hope we are able to extract the serialization parameters that are produced by various other steps and carry them along with the pipeline so that the store step can do, can do the right thing. And users will be able to squirrel away values in that, in that metadata cache uh, and get it back again themselves if they want. Um, the, the next problem that, that people complain about or, or feel <coughs> imposes constraints they don't like is that XPROC 1.0 says very definitely and explicitly, because we were trying to simplify the problem space, that what flows between steps in a pipeline is XML documents, full stop. So uh, if you have a step that produces uh, an image or a zip or a text node, the pipeline falls over. Or you have to base64 encode it. There's, for some edge cases, there are some tricks you can do to work around that. 
Um, we're going to try to address that in, in XPROC 2.0. We don't have a really well-defined answer to how yet. Uh, there are a couple of possibilities. Uh, one possibility is to have uh, uh, XML documents, XML stub documents flowing through the pipeline for which there is, you know, which the pipeline knows are, are actually stubs for some binary content or non-XML content in the background. Um, there are a few other proposals. Um, more when we know more. Uh, one thing that will come out of this is that, that um, the input, input and output ports will now be able to declare the kinds of things that they consume and produce. So the pipeline will be able to tell if you hook an image ping step up to a step that expects XML that that's not going to work and attempt to give you some guidance statically rather than falling over with some really obscure parse error uh, partway through. Uh, we decided to simplify inline. Uh, th this is a mixed bag of things. This is of the 40 some odd issues that came from the requirements. We've we think we've closed a third of them, to have, somewhere between a third and a half of them. So this is kind of a mixed bag. Some of these are big and some of them are small. Um, it used to, in XPROC 1.0, you have to put a p colon inline here uh, in, the, in this input in order to have inline XML, and that's tedious. For the vast majority of pipelines, people put exactly one document in there. It has exactly one root node, and so in that case, you can leave it out. Uh, if you want to do something more complicated by a sequence, like a sequence of inline documents, then you have to put them back in because otherwise there's no way to know where the boundaries are. But um, uh, we're going to, we're going to uh, add attribute value templates and text value templates to the language so you'll be able to, uh, to compute values in, uh, in the shortcut syntax for, for step options without having to use p colon with option. Uh, and we're going to generalize from the p colon document step that we got and text value templates in the latest XSLT and allow you to use text value templates in inlines uh, in ports. Uh, don't ask me exactly how the context nodes determine in those cases because I'm not sure we've worked that out yet, but there will be an answer. The default readable port, presumably, but. Uh, we're going to allow you to declare the types on options uh, so that you can, so that the uh, processor can know that you're supposed to be passing decimals in as a count, for example. Uh, we're going to enhance p colon try so that you can catch individual exceptions separately instead of having to have one catch and then, and then some sort of p colon choose to determine which one they were. We're, we're thinking about having a finally. Finally is a little bit weird in a pipeline context. I'm not sure it will survive to the end of the process, but we're at least toying with the idea of you can imagine if you had a pipeline that opened up some, uh, some connection to some back-end database store that you might want to do some cleanup if something went terribly wrong, and so that would finally would be a place to put that. Um, it's, you can't really let finally read from other ports necessarily, and it certainly can't produce any output because the pipeline's going down, presumably, or it's going to be caught by a higher level or something. So um, not clear exactly how that's going to work. And then finally, there's, there's, uh, there's some miscellany. Uh, I didn't think I needed to put one on each slide. Um, an inconvenience in XPROC 1.0 is that there are a handful of steps that don't have a primary output port, so you have to do this sort of longhand connecting them up. Um, we've decided that's stupid. We've just made them all have primary output ports. We've added some version attributes so you can specify the version of XML schema and XQuery you want to run, and uh, we already had that on the XSLT step. Uh, and, and there's no longer going to be any pretense that you can build an XPROC processor on top of an XPath 1.0 implementation. So we've, we've simplified the spec a bit by removing the, the, some of the hacks that we had to put in place for XPath 1.0. Uh, I think that's it. So uh, I encourage you to read the spec, uh, to make comments, to file issues. The GitHub issue tracker is there for your enjoyment. Um, I went considerably faster on that one, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to try answering them. Uh, where's the link? The link was on the slide earlier. That's where the link is. There's the, there's the link. Should have put that on the summary slide. Fine, fine. Um, Norman, what happens uh, to the uh, extension steps which are now in Calabash, like zipping and unzipping? Um, I, think, I, I think a bunch of the sort of uh, extension steps that have been implemented by, by at least a couple of the implementers will make it into the P namespace and become standard optional steps. The working group is still somewhat divided about how to make that process work, um, but that's, that's my expectation. Thanks. Is uh, backward compatibility a requirement 
uh, if I execute an existing pipeline uh, with an Xproc2 processor, would it work? Or do you just don't care? We've decided that we don't have to guarantee that will work. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that there will be a, a significant, well, there are a significant class of simple pipelines that will be the same. I hope that in the class of pipelines that aren't the same, we can do something clever and make at least some of them run correctly. But the, the, the changes that were needed to things like parameters made maintaining backwards compatibility as a requirement just a non-starter. Well, yeah, actually, I would expect most of them to be different because of the parameters at least. Yeah, it depends whether most of your pipelines use parameters or not. It's, it's not clear to me. Great. Thank you. We still have time for one last question. Anyone? It seems that all questions have been answered yesterday in a pub. Perfect. So then, thank you very much, Norm. Thank you.